What's up guys and welcome to my full day of eating on the cut. Now I actually recorded this video a few days ago but I just realized I didn't have an intro so might as well just make one now. But I've been cutting for a little over three months now. I actually started back in the beginning of April, April 1st to be exact for those of you who actually follow this channel. And I believe I was somewhere around 185 pounds. I actually peaked at 187.2 somewhere near the end of March. And I'm currently 169.4 in the morning. So nearly 15 pounds lost in 15 weeks. So on average around a pound a week. And that's pretty much exactly what I was aiming for. Just very slow, gradual weight loss. And I'll put a video on the screen of my progress. I use an app called Fit Index, which basically measures your body weight and logs it automatically for you. And as you can see, my progress has just been extremely linear, super consistent, pretty much because I eat the same thing every day. I'm actually currently eating at my maintenance calories, but basically what I did to cut was I started at like 3,700-ish. Honestly, some people are going to be like, dude, 3,700 at the start of a cut. You guys got to remember, I was eating like 4,500 at the end of my bulk. I was pretty much overweight at that point. I've always been a skinny kid my entire life. I've always had a high metabolism. I'm pretty active. Yes, it is a blessing during a cut that I get to eat so much, but on a bulk, it is just an absolute nightmare. So I basically started at the highest number of calories that I could to ensure weight loss. And then I just slowly decreased that number week to week in order to stay in a calorie deficit, because obviously as your weight goes down, your caloric maintenance decreases. So you just need to eat less in order to stay in a deficit. But I am pretty satisfied with how I look currently. And I did stop the cut. I'm just currently maintaining my weight, which is why I'm eating at my caloric maintenance. And I do plan on starting a bulk very, very soon because obviously time away from bulking is time away from building muscle most effectively. But the diet that you will see in this video is pretty much the lowest amount of calories that I ate throughout the entire cut. And that's essentially because obviously I just kept removing foods or decreasing my portion sizes to make sure that I kept losing weight until my weight just eventually plateaued, which is pretty much where I am now. So the meals that you will see in this video are essentially the same that I ate throughout the entire cut, obviously with just less portion sizes, but the total calories and macros will be included at the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So a lot of you guys did like the voiceover from my bulking full day of eating. So here I am again. And the first meal is pretty much the same breakfast that I ate on my bulk. So hundred grams of oats and 200 milliliters of almond milk placed in the microwave for 90 seconds, then the addition of one scoop of protein powder. I've actually been measuring this out recently since a serving is supposed to be 25 grams and a scoop can sometimes be a little bit off, but honestly, it's not that serious. Also, I use chocolate mint, a solid second behind cinnamon cereal, mix that in and add one banana, which usually comes out to a little over 100 grams. And that is it. Very solid pre-workout meal that's been a staple in my diet for almost three years, and it's never let me down. The oatmeal is finally done. It is currently noon right now, so it's been nearly a half hour since I finished that. I was just watching TikTok and procrastinating if I'm being completely honest. But anyway, I'm going to shower real quick, head to the gym. I'll probably record some of my lifts to show you guys. It's a pull day today, back and biceps, some rear delts. Definitely not vlogging because I'm extremely socially awkward and that would be not good. That would just be not good. So probably put some heart style music in the background, something like that. I guess we'll see what happens. When the dark of the night comes around, that's the time that the animal comes alive. Looking for something wild. So the workout is done. It is time to down this protein shake. Five grams of creatine, 20 grams of protein. I just realized I'm not even looking at the camera. Obviously you don't need to down a protein shake after your workout. I just like to because I mean, well, why do I do it actually? I don't really know. I guess it's just a fucking ritual at this point. So let's just, let's just do it. So immediately after my workout, I always have a post-workout protein shake with creatine. Then when I get home, I make a post-workout snack, which in this case is blueberry chocolate protein yogurt. Measure out hundred grams of blueberries and cut up one protein bar in a bowl. I use chocolate peanut butter, then microwave that for one minute at 170 grams of plain Greek yogurt, mix it together, and there you go. It is the absolute pinnacle of protein, the perfect combination of warm and refreshing, melted and chewy. And I also wash a kiwi for some extra carbs. This is pretty much just a snack, a post-workout snack. It's not really a meal 
meal to be completely honest. It's just some Greek yogurt with a protein bar and some frozen blueberries. And then we've got a kiwi that I eat with the skin because I'm an absolute menace. I've been doing this for a couple of years. And if you're not eating the skin, you're simply not doing it right. All right, so that post-workout snack got absolutely demolished. It's currently 3.30 right now on the dot. And meal two, I usually eat at around five. But I got a shower again because I'm all sweaty and I look like shit. And then I guess it's time to make lunch. So for lunch, I have a shredded chicken quesadilla with some fruit, and this is actually my most time-consuming meal to make, as I do usually have to cook the chicken from scratch, since I only make enough for like three servings. But I do use boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which my mom generously cuts into pieces for me, making them easier to cook. Always start by turning the stove on medium to high heat and place the chicken on a board. In terms of the seasonings, I use Memphis-style barbecue, ground paprika, Frank's Red Hot, onion powder, garlic powder, and Cajun. Obviously, make sure to season both sides, using only your left hand to touch the meat, so you don't have to wash your hands like every 15 seconds. Then once they're all nice and coated, gently place them into the pan and cover it up so the steam gets trapped, allowing them to cook from the inside out. And while that's cooking, grab another pan and a whole wheat tortilla, measure out 20 grams of cheese, and place it on another burner without yet turning it on because the chicken is not nearly done yet. So while we do wait, just wash and cut up your fruit so you can snack on it without getting bored. And normally I don't measure it out since, to be honest, it's pretty inconvenient. I normally just eat one apple and one pear, but for the sake of the video, I did actually measure it and it came out to be around 148 grams of apple and like 198 grams of pear. I could be wrong, but this is just off the top of my head. Then flip over your chicken and after like another five minutes when it's finally done, place six ounces onto a plate and turn on the burner with your tortilla. Then shred your chicken into smaller pieces, pour in some sour cream once the cheese is melted, throw on your chicken, even it out, fold it, flip it over, turn off the stove, and that is it. It does take a bit to prepare, but it is most definitely worth it. One bite and you will understand. All right guys, meal two has finally been constructed. It took me about 20 minutes to make all the food, the chicken, the quesadilla, to cut the fruit. The quesadilla tastes absolutely fucking incredible. I'll show you guys it right now. I have become a master at making the quesadilla idea. It's literally just a tortilla with cheese, sour cream, and chicken, so not very difficult. If you guys are not on the quesadilla wave, I mean, you're just not living life to the fullest right now. The tortilla is just toasted to perfection. It is just absolutely unbelievable. All right, so the quesadilla and the fruit is down. That is by far my favorite meal of the day. But anyway, I'm gonna go edit a video real quick and I'll see you guys at eight for my next meal. So for my final meal of the day, I make a burrito bowl with chicken, rice, broccoli, and salsa. I used to also use sour cream and cheese, but as I got deeper into my cut, I obviously needed to cut calories. Now this is super easy to make since the chicken is already cooked and my mom usually makes my rice and broccoli beforehand. So I literally just take it out of the fridge. But just measure out four ounces of brown rice into a bowl, then cut up some broccoli on a plate until you reach another four ounces, and finally shred up your chicken and pour five ounces of that in as well. Heat it up in the microwave for two minutes, and while I wait, I usually just snack on exactly one serving of nuts, which is 32 grams. Then once it's done, measure out 56 grams of salsa, which is exactly two servings, mix it up, and that's it. Your own homemade four ingredient burrito bowl done in less than five minutes. Super easy, super effective, and never gets old. It's pretty much just chicken, rice, and broccoli with some salsa. Well, I mean, that's exactly all it is. But I'm actually currently in the middle of watching a Stranger Things episode with my parents. Usually when I eat dinner, I'll watch something with them. We just started season four of Stranger Things and we're on episode three, I believe. So honestly, I'm just gonna try and eat this as quick as possible because my parents are downstairs waiting for me to finish. I'm just gonna fucking melt this literally as quick as possible. Ugh. Matt Stoney would not be impressed right now. It is time to go finish this episode of Stranger Things. And then again, I'm going on a walk with my dad at 8.30. It is currently 8.14. Last meal of the day is at 10. So I guess I'll see you guys then. So this is actually my final snack of the day. Meal, snack, whatever. It's my last consumption. But it is peanut butter toast with frozen fruit and a massive protein milkshake. Place the bread in the toaster or toaster oven. Fill up your blender cup with some ice and measure out 50 grams of protein powder. I'm currently using chocolate mint as I just ran out of peach mango, but both of them taste incredible. Then add 240 milliliters of almond milk, which is one serving. Mix it up for 90 seconds and sip on it while you wait for the toast. For some reason, I have to manually flip it over to make sure it toasts evenly, but once it's done, leave it in there for 20 seconds so it gets nice and crispy. Then scoop 25 grams of peanut butter onto each slice, so 50 grams total, and handpick the frozen fruit so that it's all nice and evenly assorted, and that is it. A really sweet way to end the day and get rid of any cravings. It fills you up, leaves you satisfied, and makes cutting not very difficult. This will fill you up on a cut. It's absolutely unbelievable because 50 grams of protein, less than 200 calories, it's absolutely incredible. And we've also got some frozen fruit here. Mango, pineapple, strawberry, and coconut. I just finished the end of the Stranger Things episode and I walked with my dad. It's currently 10, 10 p.m. And um, yeah, I'm hungry. So let's just fucking get started. The coconut is like surprisingly chewy as well. It's good though. It's really good. I'm gonna be completely honest here. <clears throat> I usually eat this meal while I'm playing Fall Guys. So not being able to play Fall Guys right now 
is kind of a letdown. Also, if any of you want to make somewhat of a protein smoothie similar to this, you'll notice that I have like a little bit of slush like with the ice. Honestly, I much prefer that with the chocolate mint just because it tastes almost like an ice cream. But with the peach mango, I would put a little bit more liquid in, a little bit more almond milk, almost to like the max liquid, to be honest. There's like a little thing on my shaker. This is like the ninja shaker. With peach mango, it tastes really good like that, but I really like the slush on the chocolate mint, so... That meal really fills me up for some reason. <clears throat> so that wraps up my full day of eating on the cut. As you can see, my total calories were just a little under 3,200. And again, that's probably absolutely insane for some people. It is a blessing and a curse, more so a blessing right now because I get to eat a lot of food on a cut. But when the bulk starts, it will not be fun. But I did set up my macros to be 40% carbs, 35% protein, and 25% fat. And the reason for this is because obviously on a cut, you want your protein to be high so that you can maintain as much muscle as possible. The goal during a cut should never be to make progress because it's just going to be extremely difficult to make progress when you're trying to lose weight. However, you definitely don't want to lose gains and in order to preserve as much muscle as possible, it's best to keep your protein high. Obviously not at the cost of other macronutrients, so you don't want to sacrifice your fats and carbs. Fats are still extremely important for hormone regulation. You definitely don't want to mess with your test, especially on a cut and carbs obviously do supply you with energy. So if you want to perform good in the gym, you need to have energy. So I think a 40, 35, 25 split was in my best interest and it did work very well because my lifts are pretty much still as strong as they were at the peak of my bulk, which is, you know, incredible progress for a cut. So yes, eating whatever it was, like close to 275 grams of protein at 170 pounds of body weight is a lot. It's definitely on the high end of the 1 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. I think it actually might be a little bit more than 1.5 grams per pound. But when you are cutting, you definitely want to preserve as much muscle as possible. And yeah, that's pretty much my calorie and macro breakdown. I do actually plan on doing some grocery haul videos and more full day of eating videos with obviously more variety because my diet is pretty similar to my bulk at this point. I mean, it's just slightly less calories. But if that's something you would like to see, let me know. Feel free to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. Comment. It helps with the algorithm and helps support my channel. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.